Welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on wakeupcalldt.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on mixlr.com backslash wakeupcalldt, as well as on facebook.com backslash wakeupcalldt, facebook.com backslash live now dt, and on youtube.com backslash wakeupcalldt. All inside of the Cafe Kubal Studios, I'm honored and privileged to have the former offensive lineman center for Syracuse, Ryan Bartholomew, here with me from Syracuse to the NFL and now to the Military Bowl. I am so proud to have him on, and I am so elated that this is one of the people in my Rolodex that when I shoot him a text message, he gets right back to me. Ryan, how are we doing today? I'm doing all right. How are you? Doing well. And let's hop right into it. You know, Syracuse, when you were playing at Syracuse, we we know that, you know, guys were going to the NFL and there was success and there's different things going on and whatnot. There's been ups and downs and around the corners. How are you assessing the here and now as we step into year number seven with Dino? Uh, it's just kind of it's just kind of odd to see kind of we start off with this orange is the new fast. We're going to run around in the dome, uh, that old Baylor offense, and, and kind of move fast to evolve to really run heavy sets and and, and running the ball with the with with the running back and the quarterback. It's just kind of odd to see that. There's not really a uh, identity to Syracuse, especially seven years with, this, with the same coach and a lot of the same coaching staff. I'm going to paint a little picture here, as I've done with, with other alum, and, and just to get your thoughts on this. This is where Syracuse is at at the time that we're talking. They do not recruit locally. Dino admitted that he has not been to a single game for any of the uh, local high schools. And all of the state championships were played in the dome. So all he literally had to do to see any one of those 10 teams is walk about a couple feet. So he has not seen the local teams. He does not recruit the local teams. He does not reach out to the alumni, as many alumni have told me. And on top of all of that, they lead the ACC in amount of players in the transfer portal, which is somewhere around 20 right now, including four schools that are going through coaching changes. And on top of all of that, his staff either gets fired or switches from year to year. I don't think he's ever kept the same staff. So we put all of this together, plus the media is not allowed anything but one opportunity a week. We're not allowed to talk to the assistant coaches, and a lot of practice is closed outside of stretching. When I tell you that, and that is that is the current culture of Syracuse football, what does that make you think of? That's a lo- load of question there, but it, it's uh... – and try try and paint a, say, say something positive based upon that, but it's just kind of I, I it seems like we're, we're not sticking to anything as as you kind of say there, we're not committing to these are the our tent poles and we're going to go apply apply that. That's one thing when when I was at Syracuse, and Coach Marone came in, he's like, look, we're going to do this, we're going to. You want to go around the state. Every every I believe every coach had a part of New York State that they're going to recruit, even if there's not players. Just relationship with with the coaches is very important. So when there are players that you feel can contribute to Syracuse University, the coaches are more likely to say good word about the university. Um, I think this kind of what I see Coach Babers and all the things that have happened is just there's not these tent poles that he wants to and to go and build upon. And I think that's something that I think with the defense they've done last year with Coach White, they did a good job. I think this year with, with Sean Tucker and um, Derek Schrader just being able to run the football, mm-hmm. that's something one to build upon and, and have that identity and recruit to it and, and kind of build your staff around that identity. I think that would be helpful. And in terms of recruiting, I mean, you got to find territories you want to recruit. And I know in the ACC, a lot of this moves more south. But again, New York State, always basically New York State or up to Maine down through Virginia, you got to be able to recruit those areas. And a lot of talent in those areas. Yeah, you know, and, and, and that to me is it's important. It's imperative that you recruit locally. And he said – during COVID that that's what he wanted to do. He wanted to recruit the area and this, that, whatever, but it was just words. Now he did take a player from New York, but not upstate New York did take a couple players from New Jersey and took a player from Maryland. 
and you have Sean Tucker from Maryland that, that's come in and whatnot. But Sean Tucker, you talk about, you know, his success is building the team around him. He was a happy accident, in my opinion, because he was the fourth string running back. Abdul Adams, if he doesn't opt out because of COVID, if Jarvion Howard doesn't opt out because of COVID, if Jawar Jordan Jr. doesn't get injured and eventually transfer, we might have never seen Sean Tucker on the field at Syracuse. So speak to that, the fact that maybe what kept Dino's job was a happy accident. Well, I say this a lot. It's sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Uh, it just sometimes you stumble into success. A lot of people have, and a lot of people work at things and, and don't accomplish anything. So while it's a happy accident, it's a happy accident we'll, we'll, we'll take and got to build upon. You look at, uh, Ryan, uh, you being a, an alum of, of Syracuse University and of the football program, what are relations like for you? You know, I always ask the alumni, how are things going? What's the connection like? What is it like for you? Yeah, so when there's a few things, Coach, uh, Coach Hicks, um, Dion Maddox, they do a good job reaching out to alumni, especially if they come in the, the area, they'll let you know. Um, Take us two games, whether it's home games, away games, always sending out emails and, and trying to get people to come back. Um, in terms of kind of Coach Babers or any of that stuff, I mean, a lot, of, I'm sure he's leaving that to them to do those things. And then if you're there, I, I haven't, unfortunately, haven't been be able to go back up there in a while. But so I can't speak to that. But the program's doing a better job. I think they have emphasized that. Coach, well, oh, sorry, Mr. Wildhack has definitely emphasized that in the last year or so to make sure that they're re we're reaching out to um, the alumni of the football program and keep in touch with them. You know, a lot of people say it's not coming from the staff, it's not coming from Babers, but Dion Maddox and, and, and Will Hicks, I mean, Dion is an alum, mm -hmm. so he knows, you know, he knows obviously what it's felt like, and so he can change that. And Hicksy is, is Hicksy. I mean, Hicksy's got relationships with all 32 NFL franchises. So, you know, the, if I ask anybody about relations when it comes to Babers, there's, there's an upset kind of like they feel pushed out attitude. And then when we talk about Deion Maddox and Hicks, it's, oh, my God, I love those guys. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I guess there are two bright spots. And, you know, I do want to make clear that as much as people are upset with alumni relations, maybe, that Coach Hicks and Deion Maddox are definitely – doing things well, and thank God for them is what I have to say. Yeah, and I was, I know this is your show, but I'm going to ask you a question. Yeah. And just based upon, all right, Hicks and Dion Max are, are building this bridge and stuff, and Coach Baber's kind of on the side. Is, I mean, I think that kind of speaks to the future of the program, I would believe, in that maybe some people aren't there for, for long. Yeah. But certain aspects of the relations must continue no matter who the head coach is. I, I, I mean, is that something you see, I, I would say? The, the, you know, see Dion Maddox and, and Coach Hicks stick around, is that what you're saying? Well, no, more along the lines of separating whoever the coach is, because when uh, Coach Robinson comes, people, um, alum from before, felt all the Coach P alums felt kind of out, out of whack. Um, same thing, Coach Coach Ramon comes in, all the uh, uh, Greg Robinson and, and Coach P alums feel like, oh, you don't have a part here. And same thing with, with Coach Baber. So maybe building something outside of the head coach themselves is something that the university, at least, or the athletic department feels is important, no matter who the head coach, because honestly, unless it's going to be another Syracuse alum, most head coaches have no affinity to alum of the schools to begin with. Yeah. So, I mean, to answer your question, I think, you know, I think coach Hicks being taken out of the strength and conditioning world was a massive mistake. I think moving him into this, you know, where he is now and, and whatever you want to call this role to take him out of there is heartbreaking to me mm -hmm. and he didn't deserve it. They Dino has shown that he does not have a bridge that's an eighth of what Will Hicks does. Mm -hmm. And so to the NFL, Hicks is, I mean, to me, he's, you know, he's a captain of the boat. So I think, you know, for Hicks to stay with Syracuse, despite being demoted is how I look at it and disrespected, 
I commend him, but he's just a good man. Yes. And and Dion Maddox has you know worked hard to be good as well. So I would like to to see that. But whoever the future coach of Syracuse football is, I would like it to be someone that wants to be there. I know some people that want to be there necessarily, and I know some people that would like the opportunity. I know if I could put a staff together right now, I think it would be a staff that alumni would like. And so to me, I hope that the right people come in that care. And there's some people that I have in my mind of the future, whenever that is. But uh, for right now, I mean, I, I think, yeah, they have to improve relations because what's what's sad right now is John Wildhack steps to a podium and says, we're going to need everybody. We're going to need the community. We're going to need the alumni to spend money. And I'm like, those are the same people that Dino refuses to call. Right. So, and, and I've had some alumni say to me or through somebody in, in, in conversation of the alum that they've said to me, listen, we have checks that we want to donate to Syracuse's football program. And all, we, all we've asked is that Dino calls us and just says hello and registers us as a human being. Dino won't do it, so they won't donate. And I think to me, I don't get that part of it. You know, you would think that the best way to sell something is to go to the people that use the product before. Yeah. And uh, Ryan Bartholomew, who's been with the Baltimore Ravens and been with the Arizona Cardinals, you should be there every single season talking to the O-line and especially the last few years when they're leading the country in sacks allowed. So, I mean, I don't understand it. It doesn't make logical sense. But in the words of some other D1 coaches that have asked me about the program, they said what we're seeing is the most perfect way to ruin a program. Oh, I can see that for sure. I can see that for sure. Because the alumni, I mean, you guys built it and it's your home. If anybody should feel welcome, it's you. Before I let you go, Ryan, uh, you had your time in the NFL, had your time with the Arizona Cardinals, Baltimore Ravens, two fantastic teams right now, two teams that could arguably make the Super Bowl. On the Cardinals offensive line right now, we see Justin Pugh. Mm -hmm. And on the defensive side of the ball, we see Chandler Jones. So the Cardinals have liked the Syracuse alumni. What are your thoughts about your history with Baltimore and with Arizona? And mind you, Evan Adams of recent offensive history on the line was with the Baltimore Ravens as well. So these two franchises have connected with you and connected with other Syracuse alumni as well. Yeah, for sure. I mean, one thing about the Ravens organization, just top to bottom, just probably classiest in sports, they do everything first rate. There's a reason why they're successful every year, no matter uh, no matter who's that quarterback with Flacco or, or, or Lamar Jackson or, or – um, Back even when Jameel McLean was there, or Arthur Jones, um, up until now, I mean, they just do everything first class. And, and Arizona, I would say they've done a lot since I've been there close to a decade ago that makes them more competitive and to, and to be in a position that they are now, um, for sure. I mean, NFL, it's you'll be surprised kind of, how they like to allocate resources. I guess when you have to pay the players, you don't invest in facilities or, or um, different things like that. But just those two teams and just those two organizations obviously have a place in my heart. But it's never surprising, especially with the John Harbaugh coach team, that they're successful. That yeah. they'll never, that will never surprise you. It'll surprise me when they're not. I'll just say that. No, and that's and that's a good way to put it. Final points here with Syracuse Orange alum Ryan Bartholomew joining Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora inside of the Cafe Kubal Studios. What is your message to to Syracuse uh, to the staff? What would you What would you if you could be with the football team right now? Dino called you in with his staff, albeit it changes from year to year. But let's say you come in here, you're sitting with the staff, you're in the room, and they say, Ryan, you played here, you know what it's like to be successful and move on to the NFL. What's your advice for us? as we try to get this ship turned in the right direction, what would you say? I just think one thing is just you're all you got. So everybody in that room is all you got and it's up to everybody in there to do the most they can to make sure they're successful. That's something I, I remember from my senior year at Syracuse. Just we had enough guys finally – we had enough talented guys as well, but guys finally that were committed to doing whatever it took to win, whether it's our workouts, our practices, strength and conditioning, 
everything across the board, doing what it takes to win. And you will see success that way. So it takes everybody in that room to, do, to make the decision that they're going to do their part for the team to be successful. That would be my message. You know, so everybody do their part. And, you know, on the field, do your 111th. And obviously in the coaching staff, do the same thing. A final yeah, point. It, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. And no, it, it's 365. It's not just on yeah. Saturdays on there. Because I think there's plenty of guys that do the – try to do their job, then they're just not prepared enough from their preparation to be successful. Yeah, you know, and I think I think it really does. I mean, and it's a continuity. You keep changing coaches, it's hard to really have a central message. And I think what Syracuse is grappling right now with is not having an identity. And when there's an identity crisis, really nothing good comes from that. So – Looking to that, hoping for a positive future. Final piece here, you're connected with the Military Bowl and with the Military Bowl Foundation. You've been with them for almost a decade, a director of marketing and ticketing uh, from, you know, for the last five years or so back 2016. Really, you know, pretty much Dino's entire time at Syracuse, you've been over here with the Military Bowl Foundation. Just what you can say about being connected to the Military Bowl and what it does for you to have so much experience with one of the postseason bowls of college football. I mean, first and foremost, congratulations. Secondly, I'm really excited to talk with you about it because I think it's it's such a unique experience. It's, it's probably very rewarding for you, I would hope. Oh, yeah, 100%. I mean, I, from the D.C. area, so being able to run a college football postseason event in my hometown uh, at Navy Marine Corps Memorial, Memorial Stadium in Annapolis, a place I played – some legendary high school games um, to support our service members, both active duty and veterans, uh, the USO, uh, Patriot Point, which Military Bowl Foundation, we have a 294 acre farm on Maryland's Eastern shore that we host, it, that we host wounded, ill and injured service members, their families and caregivers uh, for retreats and just days of relaxation just so they can kind of heal. Um, it's just ultimate rewarding, just to tie the philanthropy to football, something, especially college football, something I'm super passionate about. It's just been, it's been really rewarding. Only, only downsides just every year I want Syracuse in the game. It's just not coming up. <laughs> Hopefully next year. Yeah, no, I, I can appreciate that. Do you think the bowl season gets diluted? when there's 43 bowls and 86 out of 130 teams are playing. I mean, how do you assess that when, when you see that, that what is it at this point? I mean, it's almost 90 of 130 are out there. I love it selfishly as a fan because I get to watch all the games and everything's televised, which is really cool. But I mean, how do you look at it as being part of, of the, of the bowl universe? Are there so many that sometimes it it gets, it gets maybe uh, convoluted. I mean, do you see that at all or no? No, not at all, because I believe each each game has a purpose, whether it's philanthropic, whether it's a com- com- being community-based. I mean, there's some bowl games in locations where they don't have college football regularly. This is their college football event, or it's certain teams being able to play in that area. It's a major economic driver for a lot of areas in the country. Um, it's a, a lot of charitable things go through bowl games. I mean, it's the impact bowls make from the college football playoff all the way down to the last few bowl games is, is immense. And just for, for players, just while there are out thoughts and while there are people that participate, nobody's mad they went to a bowl game. They, they get a lot free gear, a lot of food, just experiences that they'll never have again. And just I, I always think back in my time of – at Syracuse, we went to one bowl game. We went to the Pinstripe Bowl. Yeah, my locker is Derek Dieter's locker. Like it's that's the experience that <laughs> I will have for the rest of my life, and I can tell people that. It's just, I mean, they're important. I get why people say, "Oh, there's so many of them," but guess what? They're still on the couch watching them, and just the amount of good that having a bowl game does for the local community—it's uh, almost unexplainable. And you had Derek Jeter's locker. How'd you pull that off? I don't know. I guess, <laughs> uh, guess the equipment people liked me at that point. I think it's just, I think it was a 
captain to captain thing at, at that point in time. But I just always remember saying that all the Yankee people come up to me and say, oh, you know whose locker this is? And each time I'll pretend not to know. I'm like, oh, no, who's? And then this, this see them say, oh, that's, that's your Jesus locker. I say, oh, okay, cool, thank you. <laughs> and to be a part of, of a legend in that is so beautiful. Ryan, I, I know you got a lot of stuff going on with the Military Ball Foundation. I'll let you get back to it. But I, I hope to have you back on the show soon because – I really do appreciate and respect our conversations and I would love to have some more time down the road here because I just feel like you have a wealth of knowledge and wisdom that I want to share with people. And I selfishly want to hear it myself. Any final notes on, on Syracuse football as we step forward here, first time they've had a thousand yard back in almost a decade of back to 2012 with Jerome Smith who did it. And so that's a beautiful thing and the single season leading uh, back in the history of Syracuse in total yardage in a single season, passing Joe Morris after the record was held for 42 years is Sean Tucker. And as an offensive lineman, I would imagine that Jerome Smith means a lot to you, and so does the fact that Syracuse finally did it again and made history. Yeah, no, I think it's something that I hope all the linemen that participate in there, I mean, just the transformation of the offensive line from the last few years to this year, I mean, it was impressive to me. Um, and just being able to do, do that again, just understand, though, that not just, you're not going to show up between Sean Tucker and all the offensive linemen and the whole offense. You're not going to show up and do it again. Yeah. So you got to put in the work and understand and get better just to get to the same level that they were before. Especially, I mean, John Tucker, All American, um, setting season rushing records and consecutive hundred yard games, or all, all the different things that they set. I mean, the other teams understand that as well. So it's just building off of that and understanding that we got to put in a lot of work to continue to stay on this level, and hopefully, pass the passing game can also help contribute to helping the run game continue. And if and when I would have an opportunity to have a say in anything, maybe I would have to bring back Ryan Bartholomew for some offensive line work with the current Syracuse players. I think their coach is doing a good job. I would say I've, I coached high school for a while. I have a couple guys that are doing well because of that. But I think the coach this year, I, my name's blank. You know, yeah, Mike Schmidt. blank on me. Yeah. He did an amazing job this year, I would say. I, can, I, I want to meet the guy and shake his hand and say he did it, how well of a job he did, especially compared to what I saw a few years back. Yeah, Mike Schmidt did a, did a good job, but I don't want to take anything away from Ryan Bartholomew, and I'm not going to. So you stay humble. I'll say nice things. For Ryan Bartholomew, Syracuse, and NFL offensive line alum, including now working with the Military Bowl Foundation, and working with high school student athletes throughout his history and so much more. Ryan, I'd love to have you back. And thank you in this crazy bowl season for taking a few minutes with me. I really do appreciate it, and it's an honor. Thank you very much. All right, take